Hi, this is MXUX. Just going to do a quick intro here. I'm going to cover Kathy Wood's projection for EV sales in 2025. We're going to cover the present ICE inventory. Shocking. We're going to cover my sales and stock price prediction for 2025 for Lordstown. And number four, we're going to go over today's ride price and some news. Shocking good news. Unbelievable, the first positive piece I've ever read on Lordstown since it opened. Okay, here's a clip from Kathy Wood on EV vehicle sales. Vehicles, autonomous vehicles. Uh, we have been saying for some time that we believe electric vehicle sales will scale from 2.2 million last year uh, to 40 million in 2025. Uh, and our, um, our early estimates for this year are something in the 3.8, 3.6 to 3.8 uh, million range. So think. Okay, there you go, 2025, 40 million units. Okay, I wanna pay, uh, record this uh, snippet here. Uh, this, is, uh, this is, this guy's a car salesman I follow. He's a great guy. Day in the life of a Chevy car dealer. Uh, uh, anyway, uh, he, uh, I'll put a link in the description. Here's what he has on his lot as far as, now, you know, I think the rate of change is accelerating and no one is noticing this uh, as far as the decision to go with an electric vehicle. I think uh, that this is taking everyone by surprise. I think the chip shortage is hurting the major three and the ICE auto manufacturers. I think it's more than that, though. And I'll tell you something else. When uh, uh, when things start moving, these chip manufacturers are going to be supplying the growth areas, which are the EV companies, not the ones, uh, not the old uh, old three. Anyway, just to give you an idea of another reason why I think uh, the endurance is going to sell, the, take a look. This is this guy's stock on his lot the rear media uh, players and the back of the headrest. So he's here signing his paperwork now. This double cab Silverado sold. So this is actually getting delivered today. Uh, so that is no longer, no longer available. So right now what we have left in inventory is this crew cab 1500 Silverado. Somehow, and I'm not sure, we still have this 2021 Tahoe LT. It's been uh, looked That's at by two numerous cars. people. There's a lot of people considering it. It seems like people want more equipment. They want the 360 camera. They want things that you cannot order or you can't get right now. Um, so maybe that's why it's here, but I don't anticipate that's going to last that long. We have this 2021 Camaro, Three cars. which was um, you know, a car that I've been working on for a while with a gentleman. If you watched my last video, I kind of explained how he's been in and out for the last number of months. He has been back. We did go over numbers. We worked everything out. It's a little less than the last quote we gave him uh, about a month right, and a half blah, ago. Blah, blah, blah. And he's thinking about it yet again. This Trailblazer RS I sold. That's why I just drove over to the gas station earlier in the video. These customers will be down here around one o'clock uh, to see if they want to take it. They basically left a deposit the other day prior to it. Okay. It got here yesterday. Blah, blah, we did blah, the blah, 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 blah. inspection and now it's all ready to go. Uh, if they don't want this car, if they decide that they don't want it when they get here, we will refund their deposit. We already have somebody lined up that wants it if they don't take it. And that is it. That is the extent of our inventory right now on new cars. Unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, and I don't think this is going to get any better any anytime soon, certainly. And uh, Lordstown is supposed to have the chips to get the production underway. Let's hope they can move that forward. They don't want to rush the start of production and certification, but as soon as they get these trucks rolling off the line, they're going to be sold, in my opinion. Hi guys, this is MXUX, September 6, 2021. I'm not a financial advisor. I'm working out the numbers for the 2025 model year for ride. And I'm going to play that supporting information, but it's pretty, pretty shocking to me. Uh, the present value target I have on ride uh, after the start of uh, production uh, without dilution is $125 a share. So the rights law, which everyone's talking about, 
double unit production growth, a uh, 15% increase. So we should be able to double pr production growth uh, easily um, at Lordstown because we're starting at such a low level. We can probably, uh, we can at least double every year um, from this year or let's just say next year to 2025. Um, no problem. So, um, the average uh, price we're going to get when we do that, we're starting at 125 um, Without dilution, we're going to be at 190 and uh, And with dilution, we're going to be at 171 A share. And this is presently at 6... 37 I think we'll go I'll do a short section on a chart um, on the, the present price so you can compare these prices but this is I don't know how many X that is so uh, we're going to be going up uh, you know what is this $65 a share uh, you know um, $49 a share Okay, and this is after the rise to 125, which I predict after the start of production. Now, here's a chart which isn't very good, uh, but we're starting right here at, uh, at, at 6. Okay, and then this point here is when we get certified and they roll the truck off the line and we start sending out uh, product even if it's five units, whatever it is, uh, that shot, I predict the stock is going to shoot up to this level. And then over the three years, here's the endurance right here. We're going to see this hockey stick. And I believe since we are starting again at such, we're starting at zero, we can double production every year easily. I think these prices are... Uh, if you see my last few videos, you've seen how I come up with this number, these numbers. So by 2025, if we average these two, you know, it's 180 a share, which is, third, what is that, 30x? 30x from present value, something like that. Um, anyway... This is my evaluation. Now, I just want to go down here. Um, these are some uh, production targets uh, that I've come up with. Um, so we got 15 cars an hour at top production speed, 8 hours, 120 per shift, potential 480 a day, 110,000 units uh, a year for the first year. Uh, 60 blah, blah blah present plant plant capacity as we have it aligned right now is 174,800 units okay with this projection we're going to be running at that capacity and we're going to have to increase uh, uh, plant capacity year two and year three uh, by 2025, uh, the plant maximum capacity is going to have to be expanded by 280,000 units a year. So, we're looking at, uh, I don't know what these total sales are, 300, uh, uh, 380, 400. Okay, we're, we're talking about half, of, let's say, half a million units in sales. This is what I'm projecting. Um, so they're either going to have to build a new plant elsewhere or they have 70% of open space at the present plant. So, uh, the point is someone mentioned in comments, uh, Schmidt, the president, they said, shouldn't we get an executive in there instead of having a production guy? No, we should not. We're going to have explosive growth. According to these projections, these numbers I've worked out. You can do your own numbers. You can work them out. I'm just, I'm going to go over what this scenario is in a minute. But the point is, we're going to have to uh, expand the plant twice 
to meet demand. Okay, and we have room there, and Schmidt's the guy to do it. And um, now this is this is a rosy scenario. I'm not a financial advisor. We still got a 34% chance of a black swan. Okay, we got this new virus coming around. Well, who knows what's going to happen? Many things could happen. Uh, you know, recalls and so forth. Uh, failure. Okay. But this is, this, these numbers and that stock price uh, means that we sell all units made. And I think they'll do that. They'll sell every unit they make. Just by the Ford Lightning demand right now, they're going to sell every unit they make. There's only one model, the Endurance. Okay. So these numbers are based on selling every endurance they can build over that time period to 2025. And by the way, these are, I believe, achievable PEs and everything else at those stock prices. If you get into speculating, it can go above those prices. Um, there's a van coming. We've already got the high top van coming. They said next year in one of the calls. We don't know if that's but that, that would be a secondary product. They also have an SUV planned the following year in 2023. Big seller. So the, these production numbers could double with, with any success with these other products. So I'm just talking about one product. And also, now, what we can assume fleet sales, but at some point, at some point, they're going to break out into public sales. So we're just talking gross sales, okay? Now, um, again, you know, they're going to have to expand uh, capacity just to meet demand, in my opinion. Now, um, and again, there's a 34% chance of failure here. I think the odds of success are very high. I think the odds of getting financing are very high. And I believe the truck is going to be a big success. Now, we got the Cybertruck. I mean, the Ford Lightning, I don't even think it's, it's an issue right now, although there are massive pre-orders. It's a vaporware truck. They're, uh, they're playing 40,000 units, something like that. They're, they're in a mess at Ford. They can't sell their mock uh, ees uh, Anyway, the whole thing. Here's the thing, the, the endurance is likely, uh, the Cybertruck is likely to weigh more than the present endurance in every configuration. Okay, so as far as fleet sales go, and also individual sales, with people that are looking at the numbers, the endurance is going to get more miles with a smaller battery. It's going to be more efficient than even uh, Tesla. Now, um, with the, uh, the thing is, now, now Warren Redledge, another YouTuber, has worked out some weights, you know. That was before the whole rear wheel steering option came into play. I believe that is going to add weight. It cannot not add weight. It will add weight. Um, so he's putting the weight of the Cybertruck. The single motor at 4,000 which would be right around the endurance, I believe with the extra steering, uh, rear, uh, rear wheel steering, you know, what is that gonna be? Who knows, 400 pounds, whatever. Uh, and the closest one in any case would be the single motor model. But uh, when you compare weight wise and efficiency wise, okay, when you compare you know, it's one versus four motors, a real four-wheel drive, more efficient, miles per kilowatt, single motor. Okay, per Redlich, 4,000 pounds. But that is that is before rear-wheel steering. 250-mile range. So, again, endurance, lighter than the Cybertruck, in my opinion. More range, 30 miles more range, more efficient than the Cybertruck. So, more efficient than a single motor Cybertruck. Also, 
has a solid axle. And this cyber has independent rear suspension. We've gone over this. And now we're talking about the weight for the single. There's a question if the single single motor rail will get made. Will it be like the um, 35K Model 3? So I don't believe the Ford Lightning, which is lower horsepower, less efficient, the base model battery in the Pro model is 35% uh, heavier than the original F-150. The endurance it, on all the performance metrics beats all of these competitors. This is why I'm making these sales, uh, sales projections. Also, they've got the plant up and running. They got Schmidt. I mean, they got the design. They got everything. They're making everything in house. They got no third party suppliers. Well, they do, but you know what I mean. Frame, paint, body, you know, all that in house. Anyway, um, and when we get into weight, also, now the endurance has more payload because it weighs less. Because, and you can look this up yourself. There's weight classes. I, I believe the maximum weight, overall weight for a pickup truck in this class is eight eight thousand pounds so the less the truck weighs the more it can carry and so forth um i'm not really looking at that sometimes more weight will move these into a different class there's different driver's license requirements and so forth i'm not worried about that i'm talking about range per kilowatt hour uh as it relates to weight um we've got the torque vectoring again uh, this goes from power to regenerative, you know, 200 times a minute, 200 times a second, whatever. This is what gives us the extra 30 miles of range over the 250 that the truck stated at. Um, solid rear axle, which none of these other trucks have. It's, it's just the endurance. It just beats on every metric, okay? And uh, here's the curb weight of 8,000. Uh, that's, that's passengers and payload and truck. So here's the thing. The Endurance has the most capacity of all the present EV trucks, and it's the most efficient. This is why, uh, in my opinion, it's going to sell. Okay? Now, um, I'm not mentioning the Rivian here. The Rivian is as heavy or heavier than uh, the Ford Lightning. The Rivian is really a lifestyle vehicle. It's not even close to being a truck, in my opinion. That's why I'm not including it. People that are going to be buying that truck are going to be in a different class. I'm not going to put I'm talking about people that want a real truck to do real stuff, want a pickup truck, want an electric pickup truck. And you heard Kathy Wood about the demand for electric trucks. I mean, the endurance is it if you go over all these metrics and all these features now the only thing you, uh, you've got different is you've got a, a new brand okay which they're going to have to prove and you've got you know the aesthetic the design uh, language whatever you want to call it you know are people i think people are going to like the design language or the aesthetic of the truck and the brand uh, I think they're going to prove their reputation with the fleet sales, and then they're going to go big, big time into consumer sales. And then again, uh, they're going to do the fleet, the last mile delivery. And then the big killer is going to be the SUV. They can do a three, three seat SUV on that skateboard and get this same kind of performance. So I think the, I think Lordstown, it's just going to, going to kill uh, over these years leading up to 2025 as these as this demand increases for um, uh, these electric vehicles especially electric trucks and uh, they're going to have to increase their uh, production capabilities so and I want to go over the cyber truck because of it and now the cyber truck has been held back again so the cyber truck really is a lifestyle vehicle it's not really a truck uh, the Endurance wins the EV pickup race, hands down. I am telling you guys, there is nothing. 
Nothing that comes close. It's the only choice for those who want need a real EV truck with a frame and suspension for towing and carrying loads. Ford, Ford and GM are worse than the Cybertruck. Uh, Rivian, you know, Rivian again. Rivian is, you know, it's a it's a SUV and it's it's not even close to being a truck. So there's there's no no there's no competition for the endurance in this category for the foreseeable future. There's nobody coming out with anything. Everybody's coming out with these things that don't meet the capabilities. And when 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 uh, Lordstown comes out with the SUV with the solid rear axle and all these other features, I mean that's going to be a killer too. So this is a you know this is a category killer. For those that want and need a real pickup truck with the frame and suspension for towing and carrying loads, okay? This is a truck. It is the only choice they have. So this is this is my my prediction. I've gone over this. I think uh, again they're going to have to expand production capabilities at the plant what do we got here 280 and 175 so that's 380 uh 400 450 so that's like 500,000 units in three years uh three years of production and i think that uh lordstown is capable of doing this production and i think that schmidt's capable of expanding the plant and again Here's our prices, and, and these dates aren't the greatest, but here's 2025 up here. As you can see, we got a hockey stick. We're starting here. We're starting at zero. Well, now six dollars. As soon as we hit production, boom, we hit that over hundred dollar mark, and then it's just straight up from there. And again, these these stock prices produce reasonable overall valuations for the company and reasonable PE figures, I think that, I think everybody is, I think this, this valuation is, has the potential of being explosive. I wanted to share this with you guys. Again, I think, you know, if we, if we put these through together, you know, 180, 180 by 2025, okay? 180 by 25. That's what? We're halfway through this year. What is that? Three and a half years? And that's going to be, what is that? Is that even 30? That's 30x. So that's my prediction, guys. And that's my data. And you can go over this and you can pause these things. And again, we do have a 34% chance of failure, in my opinion based on the black swan or some other circumstances. This is a high risk investment. Don't kid yourself. Um, don't risk the rent money. But I'm just saying, in my opinion, and do your own DD, work these numbers back. Start with these numbers and go backwards. I think you'll see this is all very doable. And I'm gonna show a clip, if I haven't already, of Kathy Wood talking about the the explosive growth in uh, demand for EVs that's going to happen between now and 2025. And again, the endurance is it as far as a real truck. It is the only one. And it's going to be the best van. And I'll tell you, it's going to be a heck of a SUV. But let's just, this is just based on the endurance. Imagine with these other units. And we have the, the room at the plant to expand. And, uh, you know, we got the top guy in there. We'll, we'll, we'll hopefully get some financing. Who knows? But I'm just saying, I think this is a very realistic, very realistic price. And again, this is without speculation. Who knows? Anyway, I'm M M -U -X -M -X -U -X. I hope you like the presentation. Thanks for watching. Hi, this is MXUX. This is some stocks I follow, some I own. One day we're going to have to go over my... Uh, portfolio here we're going to just go to ride and uh, we're going to get a price today 
After hours were up five cents, six forty. I'm not sure what the open was. Let's go to the chart. Well, here's the chart here. So we opened high and sold off uh, six forty eight, and we ended up at six forty five. <clears throat> Let's just take a look at the chart. And this is just a set of benchmark for uh, ride. There we go. And let's just go to one day here. There's our chart. And it looks like we've got some trading going on around this uh, 640 mark. So that's what the uh, stock is doing today. Um, again, after hours, 645. This is of my 2025 um, price projection uh, video. And let's just go over the news here. Oh, there was some decent news. This is VB. This is a um, small cap. They're saying that the small cap uh, uh, ETF is going to be booming. They gave it a giant. Uh, what, what was the what was the figure they gave? Um, see a twelve percent upside. Okay, so. Uh, of course, they don't. Uh, oh, and they own Rye. Huh. I did not know this. Huh. Okay, so here you go. Wow, did not even know this. I thought they were talking in general about small caps. Uh, analysts on average are expecting Rye to reach a target price of thirteen eighty-six a share. <laughs> Mine is much higher than that. So, this is some big news. So, uh, I did not know this. This is uh, this is VB. It's an e ETF, and they're holding ride, and they're expecting 121 percent above the recent target price. 1386, I think, is way too low. Okay, there's some good news. All righty then. All right, these guys are on the ball. All right, guys, just going to wrap this video up with a close. Uh, again, there's a lot of, this is a rosy scenario. There's a 35, 34% chance of downside. There's also, I believe, uh, an opportunity to, uh, for this to go much higher as well. Uh, I hope you liked the video. Please do your own DD. Do not put the rent money. This is a high risk, risk on investment. Um, work these numbers backwards. Pause this video. Take a look at the work yourself. Thanks for watching. Hey guys, look. The circle with the palm tree in it is a subscribe button. Okay? When you see it, click subscribe if you like getting this information. Listen, I gotta have your help to keep doing this. I'm the only one that's out there these days doing the Lord's Town. I'm raising the Lord's Town army here, okay? Alright guys, please subscribe. Thanks for the comments.